Morning guys, brew day number two with the uh, Bulldog Master Brewer. Um, going to be doing a hoppy saison today. I'm going to add some uh, heather honey in as well at the end of the uh, about 10 minutes ago. I'm going to use uh, Ella and um, Gerillo. And uh, yeah, I'm going to crack on. I've had the water heating up on uh, low power for about an hour while I get myself sorted. We're just about there, so I'm going to uh, just talk you through the controller again, and um, we'll get started. We want 2200 power, set that. We want full power for the first mash step, in all fairness. There's no point messing about with the power settings on this. Uh, set that. Target temp, I want 65. Set and I want 70 minute. Well, I'll do a 75 minute mash. That's giving me 15 minutes, plenty of time to get the uh, grain in and uh, get the um, the mash going. If I get the grain in in sort of less than 15 minutes, it's not really going to be an issue. I'm still going to have a an hour and a bit mash time. So I set that. Next step, we're going full power again, and I'm gonna sparge. Knowing from last time, it didn't really take me that long to sparge, uh, so because I was going with the uh, the Bulldog Brewer connected to the pump. So knowing what I know from uh, last time. It's not going to take me that long to sparge, so I'm just going to set this to go to 90 and then hold. Yeah, for, I'm only going to do it for five minutes, for a five minute hold. Because by the time it gets from, in fact, no, I want to, uh, do I want to mash out on this? So, yeah, I'm going to mash out. So we're coming down. So I'm going to mash out at 76, set. And I'm going to do a 10 minute mash out. Set that. Full power for step three again. Set. And we're going up to 90. While we sparge. So we want to, we'll be raising the temperature to 90C while we sparge. And I'm just going to let that go for five minutes okay because I would, I'd imagine I'd have sparge by the time I get there so I just want it to sit there for five minutes that'd be good so set that next step we're going for the boil now remember what we said about this so set your target temp needs to be above boiling yeah you want to achieve a good rolling boil all the time so I'm going with 103 set and I'm doing an hour boil that two minutes I don't even need that long a minute is just so that I can mess about with the calibration to get the timer going um, yeah again just give yourself a minute to do that just so at least you know then you've got your boil for the right amount of time and your timer so that is that basically I mean you can do cooling steps in this if you wanted to do you know you want to get it down to 80 for a for a steep you know a 20 minute steep you can set that up and then you can also set it up to go down to 23 22 for temperature to get into the FV um, but I'm not doing that today so we just say go so start that, yep, and it's going to go to 65. So while it's doing that guys, I will get the grains ready and come back to you. We have a mash paddle, just turn this tap off through the top so we can move that out of the way for a second. Let's get this grain in. 
Also the guys, just remember, plug, make sure it's in. Being careful not to get it down the sides. Very simple grain bill for me today. Just five kilos of extra pale marisotta. 200 grams of biscuit. So I'll get this dough in fellas and come back to you when I'm ready to get the recirculation going. Right, the dough guys have given it a good stir. I need to get this set up now, so plug out in case you get a stuck mash. If you've, if you've gone away, then it's going to drain through this hole down to the bottom and hopefully stop it from coming up and over the edges yeah, with a stuck mash. I mean, I'd always be in a close distance, keeping an eye on it every five, ten minutes, I suppose, just to make sure that everything's going all right. So, sparge plate on. This is, I mean, it's a sparge plate, yeah? So it's for sparging after you've done the mash, yeah? When the grain basket's been lifted. But it's a good, I think it's good practice with this to use it when you are mashing. You can get it right down there onto the bed to so let it come through yeah so that it gives you a good idea that you've got everything running at the right speeds you just want a coat on the top of the plate so we get a tube on In the hole, lid on. Get it where we want it. Makes no odds really. And turn the tap on for the recirculation. Get it going. You can see that there, guys. We'll adjust that in a minute. Make sure everything's good. Make sure your pipe's on right. Right guys, so all in all, that took me, well, 10 minutes. It's as simple as that. Let's take a quick look at what we've got while we're at it. So you can see there, this is the tap coming out, round to the pump there, Whoop, there, <laughs> just above that the pipe coming out, the metal pipe coming out and going into there is your anti-burn and then the riser coming up is for your recirculation into the top of the uh, boiler. Both have got uh, valves on there. Obviously you can set the flow of your recirculation on this one, but for me, I just keep that on full. Just keep that anti-burn swirling. I think it keeps a good constant temperature of the work as it's recirculating. Um, and, and as I've said before, it's a really good bit of kit. Also, on all the other systems, they're single walled. This is double walled. So you'll see there, if I lift that up, thickness of the wall there is basically just filled with air and works very much like a flask. Yeah? So let's just have a quick look where we are with this. 
So it's all going through well. I'm going to turn that down just a touch. So bring it up, turn it down a touch. I've got a nice little trickle coming through. All good. So I've linked the pump on the new Master Brewer up to the tap on the old boiler. Okay. Making sure that this anti burn tap is off. It's also off at the top. I can turn that on now. Okay, so that's on. And we are at 74, 75. So let's open up the tap here. Obviously, nothing's happening yet because the pump's off. As soon as we achieve our temperature, I can get the sparge going. Right, so we've got a really good flow going. The sparge water. Push the um, sparge plate further down onto the grain bed as it had all compacted after I'd uh, let the uh, wort drain out of it. So I've pushed it right down onto the grain bed so the sparge plate's sitting right on top of the grain. And we've got a decent film of water, hot sparge water on top of the sparge plate. Constant flow dripping through the grain bread bed and uh, washing out all the last bits of sugar that we can. I don't know if you can see that from there. But I did have 20 litres in there. According to my recipe, I only need 10. So I'll just wait till it gets to the 10 litre mark on the uh, inner, inner workings. And stop it, let it all drain out. You see the boiler is going up to 90 degrees. And it's going to stop on 90 degrees for five minutes. Hopefully by then we'll have the sparge complete. Five litres in. And I'll be back guys when the sparge is done. And we're going to get it up to the boil. Right, sparge is done. This bloody thing keeps falling in the way anyway. Sparge is done. So it's now, it got to the 90, it's holding, it's, it's ticking down five minutes. Now you could do that for 10 minutes in all fairness, just to let all the drains drip out. But I'm going to put it into a bucket anyway to catch any of the remaining. And if I need to top up the boiler, I'll just put a bit more hot water through it because um, I've got a bit spare, well, 10 litre spare actually. So, very easy with that guys, just a bit of extra hose in there is all you need and if you do get yourself uh, one of these new systems and if you are an old Bulldog Brewer user, don't sell it, you know, <laughs> it's a great sparge water heater. You can get the actual proper sparge water heater uh, from Bulldog Brews and it comes with the uh, compatible tap. Um, heats it up to temperature, I think it's about 20 litres and I think they're about 99 pounds so definitely worth getting one of those you know, definitely worth it. So I'm gonna get this off fellas and uh, see where we are volume wise. Right we've got the boil 
just need to keep an eye on this because it's a bit of a bugger with the top spider in. So I think we're just about on top of it. I don't think we're going to have any catastrophes. Right, so calibrate. Remember what I said? Calibrate it up. Two, one, two. One oh three. Time has started. Calibrate it back down because basically it's just turned the thing off. Yeah, it's turned the boiler off. Calibrate it back down. So it is always going to the boil, yeah? So you're going to have a nice, steady, rolling boil. As I said before, just to keep the temperature inside the hop spider up to speed, I'm running the circulation through the top into the hop spider. I'm also running the anti-burn on full. Okay? So all good at the minute um, and this will also clean out any micro particles and uh, hopefully give us a nice clean end product yeah so guys I'm gonna just stop here for a second get my hops ready and get the uh, first edition in hello brew day is done um, I stopped filming in the end I had a couple of problems with um, the bazooka filter blocking up uh, with the pump. So yeah, all went peak tong. Got about 20 litres out in the end into the cube. It's out there now. It was only a 19 litre batch, so we're not that far off in all fairness, and there was quite a lot left in the bottom. Um, I was actually over on my uh, pre boil by two litres so all worked out well in the end really because I left about two litres in the bottom um, probably more actually more than that it was above the uh, tap outlet a bit of a pain in the bum in all fairness but you know it's done now I added uh, all of my hop additions so basically at 45 minutes I added um, what did I add I actually added Eucanop at 45, um, 8 grams of those, and then at zero, so flame out uh, and a 20 minute steep, I put honey in, uh, which I'd diluted with a load of hot water, and uh, I also put uh, 20 grams of Drillo, 20 grams of Ella in. I left that for 15 minutes. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with it, happy enough with it. Just having a clean up now. The pump didn't like the blockage, in all fairness. Um, might have to look at something different in the future. Either that one, just not use the bazooka. And just uh, recirculate into the uh, hot spider uh, that thing there clean ups going well getting a keg ready to get kegged this stuff's going in there first brew it's going to go in the keg layer and uh, yeah any questions guys come to the um, home brew beer facebook group and uh, ask the questions um, either that or just leave them in the comments on the video pretty straightforward today no real dramas just the bazooka and it's always an issue that with, well it was always an issue anyway with the um, with the old bulldog system um, so I might have to look at something different for that not sure what yet but we'll see so thanks guys um, a lot shorter this one, kept it short and sweet. Um, we'll do a couple of taster videos, a bit of catch up, 
with the beers that we've done in the next couple of weeks um, and uh, start planning out the next brew. Um, I think I'm going to do a porter or a stout next. So please th thumbs up the video, um, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, yeah, wait out for the next one and we'll see how we go. Um, one thing I can just point out to anyone who's going to get one of these be careful with these switches. It's a waterproof casing, but it's very hard. So if you're going to switch off the pump, which is there, sometimes it pushes in there, which will then knock that out completely. Which it did with me today. So I'm glad I'm making these errors for you. Be careful with these switches, definitely. I mean, it is a waterproof seal on there, but please be careful because uh, it just resets the box. Um, any other problems? Just the vibration, I know the vibration in the pump is now, I mentioned it on the last video. Um, it's basically when the bazooka filter clogs up, the work is struggling to get through and it's making everything work a lot harder and it vibrates. I mean it's working a treat now, look, no problem at all. So I'm just going to run this through, once it gets to temperature I'm going to run it through and let it run for half hour. We'll do apologies, half hour. And uh, yeah, away we go. Quick little look at my setup. Gas manifold, good thing. This is my uh, regulator and the fridge. With all my bits coming in to the side. That's just got fresh water in it at the minute. Only two dodgy taps. Well, they're alright actually, they're not great. Used to be on the side there, not ideal. I was going to move the fridge. Better on the front actually. I've waffled on long enough, guys. Cheers, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.